10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 302. Hey everybody, welcome into episode 302 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, and if you are new to the show, thank you so much for checking us out. Hopefully we can bring you some quality jazz education material here this week. And because it's a new month, it is time for a new series. This series is going to be all about the entire process of learning a tune and some of the things that you can do to make it a little bit easier or at least give you a clear cut approach and let you tweak uh, your own things to make it personal to you. So before we jump into the show, as always, just want to remind you, this is a listener supported program. We do not have advertisements on the show. Instead, we rely on support from people like you that find value in this. Uh, If you do choose to support us. We use the Patreon platform. You can find that by going to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, clicking on one of the Patreon banners. And for a small fee every month, you get a ton of jazz education materials, including a PDF that goes along with every single episode. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to some new patrons. Thank you to our new $5 patrons, Jeffrey, John, and James. And thank you to our new $3 patrons, George and Melanie. Also want to shout out to Emily for for editing their pledge from $3 up to $5. Thank you so much to those people. Welcome to the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. Again, if you would like to join them and the over 350 people over there that are supporting us, go to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners and get yourself signed up today. So this idea for this series on the complete guide to learning tunes came from a question that I asked in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson community Facebook group about what people would like to see episodes on. And Yoav uh, mentioned, okay, I want to know what I should do before I just basically start noodling over a tune and starting to learn it. And that was what kind of birthed this idea of doing a series on this. So thanks to Yoav for that question. But of course, all of you that know me know that I can't just start at the point of learning a tune, we have to cover some ground first. So for the first couple episodes, we're just going to talk about some skills that you need to even approach learning a tune. And I know what you're thinking, why do you always have to make it so hard, Nick? Why can't you just get right down to the question? But really, this is part of being a jazz musician, right? Sometimes we can't just get down to the act of what we want to be able to do, we have to develop the skills that are going to make that act a lot easier, a lot smoother, and are going to help us in the long term, right? So the skills that I'm going to go over today are really, really going to help you in the long term. And what we're going to talk about today is recognizing some of the most common chord movements that happen in the majority of jazz standards. So by being able to hear and recognize these progressions, these modulations, and quickly being able to pick them out of something new that you have to learn or want to learn is going to speed up the process of learning a tune so much for you. And it's gonna save you so much time in the long run that you just can't ignore some of these progressions that we're gonna talk about today. So these are progressions and modulations that you are going to hear over and over and over and over again. In maybe almost every tune, you will see at least one of these things. Of course, there are exceptions to that, but again, it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. So let's start with the ubiquitous 251. I'm not really going to spend any time on this because we spend so much time talking about this progression, but this will actually set us up for all the other things that we're going to talk about. It's the same process to being able to hear this, um, doing a little bit of singing that's going to help us with the more complicated um, progressions that we're going to go over, modulations that we are going to go over. 
So what we want to do is a couple of things. The very first thing I want you to be able to do is sing root movement and just root movement. So obviously the two, five, one progression just follows the circle of fourths and being able to sing around the circle of fourths is going to be one of the most valuable things that you can do for yourself. So I want you to basically just sing the root movement, which is three fourths for a two, five, one. Two, five, one. Or alternatively, two, five, one. So once you can sing that root movement and recognize that circle of force movement, then you want to get used to what the actual chords on top of it will sound like. Some semblance of that. but really you want to listen for that root movement. Okay, so there's the two, five, one. Now the natural extension of the two, five, one is a three, six, two, five, one. So that is just extending that circle of force back two more notes, right? So now you have five chords to get to that one chord, but it's still just moving around the circle of fourths. Three, six, two, five, one. And then once you can sing that root movement and recognize it, then of course you want to fill it out with the chords. All right. So by recognizing those two progressions, you're going to get really, really far because those are the two cadences that jazz composers like to use more than anything else. So being able to hear that and being able to recognize it is going to help you in hundreds, if not thousands of tunes, being able to just quickly look at a chord progression and being able to recognize all those things catalog it in your mind and understand, oh, okay, this is just a 251 or this is just a 36251. That's going to save you a lot of time. All right, let's talk about a couple of other things. So there are two really, really common modulations in jazz, and a lot of tunes will do this. So the first one we want to talk about is a modulation to the relative minor. So let's see that, say that we're in the key of C major. That is our home key. What you're gonna see a lot of tunes do is modulate to the relative minor of C major, which is A minor. And the way that we get there is an extension of what we already talked about. The way that we get to that new key, the way that we tonicize the new key is to do a two, five, one. So if we're going from the key of C major and we wanna to get to the key of A minor, what we are going to most likely hear is this. So what that was by chord is a C major chord followed by a B minor seven, in this case, minor seven flat five to an E seven. And then finally we land on that A minor chord. So here's what you're listening for. If you hear the one chord in the major key, and then you hear a root movement where it's moving down by a half step, and then you start to hear the circle of fourths, you can pretty much be guaranteed that we are modulating to the relative minor. Let's hear that root movement again. That is actually a pretty easy modulation to hear. So your ear is going to pick up the fact, okay, we're modulating, right? But you're going to hear that movement of a half step down that's gonna start the cadence to get to that relative minor. And then of course, if you fill in all the chords, okay, so learn to hear that and learn to be able to pick that up when you're looking at the chords as well. Okay, if you notice that it moves from a major chord down a half step to like a minor seven flat five chord, 
most likely what's happening there is we're getting ready to modulate to the relative minor. All right, and then the other modulation that we have talked about in the past is many, many, many jazz standards will modulate to the key of the four. So again, if we're in C major, that's our home key, what we're gonna hear is a modulation to F major. Okay, and again, the way that we get there is by way of a 2-5 in the new key. So what that would look like is a C major chord, moving to G minor seven, to C seven, to F. So again, that initial movement is what we're looking to hear. The root movement will move either up a fifth or down a fourth, and then you'll start moving around that circle of fourths. So you're going from C to G, back to C, and then to F. And of course, you need to be able to uh, use logic to complete that same progression in any key that you're in. But again, learn to hear this root movement. And then if we fill in the chords, So being able to see and hear a modulation from the key that you're in to the key of fourth up, that is going to be extremely, extremely important. You're going to see that time and time again. Okay, so this is a little bit of the legwork that we're going through is actually learning to hear these different chord progressions, these different root movements, because then when it comes down to learning a specific tune, we already have some of those really, really common things in our ears. We understand them and we can pick them out like right away. And again, this is just gonna make the process so much easier because as you start to learn more and more and more tunes, you're going to want to speed up the process, right? And the more tunes that you learn, the more similarities you see between them and that's really going to facilitate with you not spending, you know, upwards of three hours learning each and every tune. The graph of you learning tunes should look like a hockey stick, where the first handful of tunes you learn is going to take you forever, and then hopefully it takes shorter and shorter and shorter, and then you do get to the point where you can learn tunes very, very quickly because you have these patterns in your mind already before you go into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, record some of these progressions for the Patreon members and drop them in there as separate files so that you can listen to, let's say, a 2-5-1 progression or a 3 6 two, five, one, or some of those modulations over and over and over again. You can sing the roots along with what I'm playing, and you can really start to get a feel for what that root movement and what those chord movements sound like. But I really, I highly suggest that you spend some time doing this because, again, I'm just trying to make your life easier when we do actually start to look at specific tunes. So like anything in jazz, there is some legwork that needs to be done before you get to the actual act of learning a tune, but it's really going to pay off for you. Okay, so in order to get those progressions, make sure you support the show by going to our Patreon. Uh, it's 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners, get yourself signed up, and you get instant access to all of that stuff. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the show. And thank you again to Yoav for suggesting this series. It should be a fun one. As always, hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there. And we will talk to you soon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. <music>